tan listos menos yo. Uh, we're about to end our tour. Uh, I want to say that uh, how much I have enjoyed uh, meeting all these cousins, grandnephews, nephews, sobrinas, PhDs, you name it. <laughs> we're, we're all here. And earlier on, we were at the Rodolfo Sanchez homestead, and I spoke there about the Rodolfo Sanchez family. There's very little more that I can add now. But I, we got here, and Joe, we want to thank you for letting us. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. 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 You better be careful with that. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing known with being here is this beautiful porch, beautiful refurbished home, is that we're all jealous. <laughs> but we can't be too jealous because you're the one that decided that you were going to do it, you and your nephew. Yeah. And you did it, and you're to be admired for that. Mm -hmm. And so we want to thank you for your hospitality. And we're now just north of the main house, what I call the main house. If we were to call this a headquarters, area for the Vicente Sanchez family. Uh, really more Trinidad than Vicente, but Vicente was a father. Well, then that would be the house to the left. And what I'd like to do today at this time is take you back in time to 1930. And uh, I am a lousy note keeper, so I don't have any notes. But I'd like to uh, set down my calendar by events and then if you can put a date on the events then you have I have pretty much an idea of where I am in history. In 1930 and it had to be early summer or late spring uh, my mother brought me here to visit Papa Vicente who was already uh, an invalid and blind and uh, I would like to uh, remark that I don't care how I figure it, I was about two and a half years old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's, in my personal life, <clears throat> that's the earliest memory that I have of, uh, of my relationship to the family and my experience with the family. And Mary's dad, who was Nicasio Sanchez, never forgets to, I think I used to rub it in, but in a fun way. Uh, they had a, the house in, in my mind's eye was a huge place. And uh, the way my geography says, the north, the southeast corner of the house had a room in it with access to the outside. And that room was where Papa Center was. There was a bed there, and there was a particular chair that he owned that he was sitting on, and there were some chairs where some women were sitting, including my mother. And I uh, remember being outside and uh, playing around, and according to my dad, I went to the kitchen and they had a fly trap. I don't know if you're familiar with the screen fly traps, but they're uh, kind of a, a, a vertical box with a cone-shaped screen inside with the bottom opened and then the baits underneath and the flies will find their way to the funnel and they work down to the bait and they can't fly out so they're trapped that's what makes it a trap and nick says that i went and i released the flies <laughs> <laughs> now there was no count but we estimated that there were must have been a half a million flies oh. <laughs> and they were all over the <laughs> the next thing that I remember mm. is that I went into the room where Papa Vicente was and I tried to get on my mother's lap and she wouldn't put me on her lap and I, looking back on it, I know why. She was very much in the last few months of the pregnancy with Joe Robert. Mm. Who asked me about Joe Robert? I did. Okay. Yeah. Well, he, uh, he was born in July of 1930 mm. and she must have been in the eighth month of her pregnancy. Mm. So that would give it about June. Mm -hmm. That's about the time that this took place. And uh, so she wouldn't put me on her lap, but she did let me stand next to her and put my arms on her lap. And there I kind of rested. 
And then Papa Vicente apparently indicated that he was going to wanted to go to bed because the women got up from their chairs, including my mother, and they helped him to the bed. They put him to bed. And then they asked me if I would like to sit in his chair. Mm -hmm. And I became totally terrified. I was just absolutely terrified about sitting, and I wouldn't sit on it. Mm. And that chair <clears throat> is today in the possession of Pavla Maestas, whose maiden name is Cisneros, and she is related to us because her mother is Otilia Sanchez, my first cousin. Oh, now, uh, all of you, I guess, or most of you have heard of, uh, <laughs> what's his name, uh, Ovaldo. Ovaldo had that chair hanging on some vegas in the barn, and, uh, and Paulita, his younger sister, asked him for it. And he said, yeah, go ahead and take it. So she took it to Pueblo, and my understanding is that it has been restored. And the chair is a very, very fancy uh, lumber chair, wood. It has uh, seats, has drawers on it, mm -hmm. and in the drawers there's compartments for pipe, tobacco, mm -hmm. and all the personal tobacco. Remember Grandpa's chair? Huh? I'm telling Joe, remember Grandpa's chair? Very similar. Because it was my Grandpa's later on. Oh. That's how we remember it. <laughs> oh, wow. So what I want to do, and I don't know if I'll do it or not, eventually I tell Mary that I want to end up in Pueblo to Angela too. Now we'd like to make a trip up there and have a city that we are having here and take, you know, have a, the people there take pictures of the chair. Mm -hmm. And I would tell the story of the chair. And he's going to sit chair. in the chair. Well, <laughs> the and we're going to steal the chair. <laughs> I thought that today I would sit on yes. the okay. chair. Now there may be some mistakes on it afterwards, but I'd sit on the chair. Uh, <laughs> my grandpa was a very stern person. He was not at all like Uncle Ida was. Oh, you know, he was like me. But my grandpa was real stern, huh? Oh, yeah. He was and he'd stern. sit in that chair, and we guys would not mess with that, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. It was the throne. Yeah. yeah. He, uh, <laughs> da Dilia, not Dilia, but Dalia, Cañón Blanco, to be told was Cañón Blanco. Mm -hmm. Me too. Cañón Blanco in the family history is extremely important. Uh, when, uh, when this section was open for homesteading, Tio uh, Trinidad, his sons, Tio Rodolfo, and a few others took homesteads. And they homesteaded land around here. So did many other people from the Antochico area. Over the years, uh, most of them uh, did not abandon the homesteads, but they sold them. And most of them were purchased by Tio Trinidad. And they have a tremendous accumulation of land that was acquired that way. And uh, Joe, I feel very honored to have you as a close relative and have you restore this house because what you restore, you preserve. He's and also you, running the ranch, too, besides uh, all that. Yeah, so. yeah good well, job. Good job. Woo! <laughs> Classmate. Yeah. 1968 classmate. Woo! 68. <laughs> I was four years old. <laughs> <laughs> That's for Lawrence. I was one. <laughs> I like I like to tell people that I'm old enough to be president of this creation. But I didn't get there because I stopped in Delia first. Found <laughs> <laughs> heaven. Why would you go first? Which is okay because it's not a bad place to be stranded at. Uh, the, the history of the family, uh, and I don't have it, I have it in my mind, and uh, at 90 years, I don't necessarily have it in my mind. I think I have pretty good on 90 years. And, uh, but if I had added to your. Uh, interest in the history of the family, if you find me entertaining, uh, then today has been a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. From, here, from here, we want to go to uh, Upper Anton Chico. <coughs> My parents and their parents, uh, Mary's parents, Tio Rodolfo, they didn't call it Upper Anton Chico. They called it Anton Chico Plaza de Arriba. Mm -hmm. Now, Anton Chico Plaza de Arriba is the starting point of the Sanchez family as we need it today.
today, as we know it today. Uh, you know, we know that they came there uh, from Spain many, many generations ago. They came there through the Dunas, to the Atrisco Land Grant, Bernalillo, Sandia, uh, San Miguel del Vado. But they ended up settling in Anton Chico Plaza de Arriba, and from there they have expanded. Uh, I told you today about the Rodolfo family <coughs> having been dispersed by the Second World War, and they're in, in, in Santa Rosa. And uh, prior to that, prior to the Second World War, Tio Trinidad and Tio Ponce de Julian, oh, yeah. they went into the cattle business together here in Cañón Blanco. But eventually they outgrew the capacity of the land to carry cattle, and so they decided that they had to split their, yes, yes. their cattle holdings. And Julian, I mentioned earlier that, that there's one thing that distinguishes the Sanchez family, is that they knew how to marry well. You know. <laughs> and they, Julian went to Duran and he married into the Duran family. And the Duran family that was the founders of the community of Duran, and more particularly the, the surrounded area, and Marino, and places like that. And there, Julian Sanchez and uh, the Duran brothers became extremely wealthy in accumulating uh, not land. For some reason or other, they, they were not too interested in, in land holdings. But they accumulated a fortune in cattle and in sheep. And their history, you know, very little bit of it is known. I know quite a bit of it because of my dad. My dad used to uh, hero worship uh, his brother Julian, and so he used to tell stories without end about Julian and uh, Duran. And Rancho del Gallo was the name of his and rancho. Rancho del Gallo, Duran. there you go. Yeah. In Duran? In Duran. <coughs> now in Anton Chico, <coughs> in Anton Chico there was a family whose last name was, uh, <laughs> you have to believe it, where uh, Patricia lives now. Anton Chico, you know what, what I'm talking about. Anyway, the owner of that house used to be a, uh, a semi-range uh, foreman for Julian Sanchez. And he, whenever I approached a gathering where he was, and this is late, this is 1942 or so, he would immediately call me to stand by him and he would start talking, talking about his experience having worked with Julian Sanchez. And that's how I have accumulated a little bit of knowledge about that end of the family. Uh, so Haim Hindi would tell us stories too. Yeah. The Hindis, I don't know how many of you know the Hindis. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. They were when, when my dad, when our dad died, they went to his funeral. Two or three of them went to his funeral. And one of them told me, I gave it to Haim, I don't know. He said, you know, he was not my uncle, but he was. And, uh, he says, there's no way that we would not have gone to this piano, you know. So they kind of adapted, adopted my Tio Julian as his Tio Julian. And they tell stories about... Uh, he, he has a saddle that belonged yes. to Uncle Julian, huh? Yeah. Beautiful. Huge saddle. You know, he, they have all those Persian saddles because they used to show Arabian horses. Oh, nice. But yeah. the best saddle there is Uncle Julian's stock saddle there. Uh -huh. Huge old saddle. Yeah. if I can just interject a little bit. Yeah, sure. uh, Duran uh, Serapio, the other great uncle of ours, mm -hmm. uh, his grandchildren now are in the process of restoring the Sanchez Cemetery there in Duran. Uh, 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 Marino. In Marino, yeah. Right. So <clears throat> the cousins uh, have already, Gary Sanchez, Don, and other people have uh, gotten the corrugated metal to put a roof over that rock chapel there inside the cemetery of the Sanchez in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, we're following the tradition of uh, preservation of the little that we have of our ancestry there. But I didn't check that. Yeah, if you were to go to Duran, and I recommend it because it's one of the uh, <coughs> miles posts in the history of the family. If you go to the chapel there, uh, uh, La Iglesia, La Capilla de San Juan, Bautista, San Juan Bautista. Uh, and the stone, the stained glass windows in that chapel, I've never counted them, but let's say that there's 15 of them. 
And of the 15, about 13 were dedicated by members of the Sanchez family. You see uh, uh, Dionisio Duran, who married uh, one of the Sanchez, Marita. Uh, Marita. You see Castulo Marquez, who married uh, Imelda. And you see many of the Durans and many Transito, of the Marianne. Transito, he married a Duran. Yeah. You know that? Serapio. Serapio married a Duran. Mm -hmm. You know, they knew how to marry. <laughs> 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 they were very good husbands, but they knew how to select <laughs> <laughs> but, but Julian and them are buried at the cemetery in, in Marino, not, in at the, not at the chapel at San Juan. Right, the, right there in Marino, yeah. yeah. A lot of the soldiers are there. Yeah. I have, there, was a, there was a memorial service there some years ago mm -hmm. where they de dedicated the, uh, I don't know if it was a Franz, or somebody was buried in there and they had a funeral service at the cemetery. It was a Franz and his wife, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, what, that's the only time I've been there. That would be Joby's father. Yeah. Okay. And that chapel, somebody told me then that that chapel was built by one of the Durans rather than one of the Sanchez's. But it doesn't make any difference, it's in the family. And the reason there's three cemeteries there is because there was a priest at that one at one time there that didn't uh, <coughs> allow the uh, Hindis to be buried in that other smaller chapel. Mm -hmm. So then they built the, their own cemeteries, the Hindis did. Yeah. Yeah. But the Kuri, uh, some of the Kuris are buried there in the Sanchez uh, Cemetery in Marino. In, in, our, in our family history, there is another personality, a couple, the Juliana Aragoni Perea and Maria de la Luz Rael. Well, Juliana Aragoni Perea and Maria de la Luz Rael were Vicente Sanchez and uh, Severina Sanchez's. Uh, Parents and parents and parents and law. Mm -hmm. Can you say that again? So, Sorry. Yeah, Juliana Aragon. Juliana Aragon y Perea and Maria de la Luz Rael were married, they were a couple. And they were the parents of Seferina, yeah. who married Vicente Sanchez. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Seferina and Vicente, and this we're going there from here, are buried in the body of the, cha of the uh, chapel in Anton Chico Plaza de Arriba. Mm -hmm. Now there, that I know, there are three families buried in there, and I didn't know about the one family until this year. But prior to this, I know that Papa Vicente and Mama Seferina were buried in there, and my mother's grandparents, um, Garcia, yeah. what's the first name? Uh, Juan. No. Pedro? No, 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 no. Anyway, he and his wife were also buried there, and then later on, I found out that there's a possibility that there's a woman named Herrera is also buried there. Now, Herrera married one of my mother's uh, uncles, Nerio Lucero. Mm -hmm. Now, that Lucero branch of the family is the one where uh, Jose Amado Cicero married for the second time. But anyway, there's an awful lot of history there. Martina was the grandma, right? Your grandmother was there. Martina was my grandmother on the Lucero side, yeah. Uh, Seferina was my grandmother on the Sanchez side. Sanchez and I. Seferina, I love that name. You might want to mention Luis on Juliana Aragoni Perea on his uh, uh, volunteer militia during the Civil War. Yeah, and before the, that, about the Santa Fe Trail. Yeah. 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 She has a book out on the Santa Fe Trail. Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah, Juliana Aragoni Perea organized. And I think the word is suited, that is armed, closed, and nourished a company of infantry and trained them. Hmm. And when he had finished training this company of infantry, he offered it to the Army of the North. Well, during the Civil War, he offered it to Lincoln, the government, the, the, Link, the government President. of Lincoln, uh, offered to serve on the Union side. And he was accepted. And he was commissioned a captain of infantry on New Mexico volunteers. And he was uh, <clears throat> assigned to Fort Union, but I don't know if he was on the way back or on the way out. But anyway, they were on the way to the front lines when uh, the war was over. And so they were returned to Fort Union uh, 
at the end of the Civil War. And uh, most of his company soldiers deserted because he couldn't uh, support him. And uh, companies like the one great grandpa William had, had to be supported by the sponsor. And then they could go ahead and claim reimbursement from the government. Well, when he disbanded his company and he left the military service, the military at Fort Union gave him papers showing his separation and acknowledging the debt that the U.S. government had for Huyato Huyana, the one in the hair. And uh, the amount in those days came out to around $10,000. And he came, he, when he was discharged, he came to Santa Fe to visit a friend. And he left his papers there with his friend and went to Anton Chico to visit with his family. And while he was in Anton Chico visiting with his family, his, friend house, his friend's house burnt and all his papers burnt. Mm -hmm. And the government would never recognize his claims after that. And one of the commanding officers, generals in the area, made the statement that it was the duty of a company commander to keep accurate records, and it was his responsibility. Mm. That was the government's way of not paying. <laughs> and so, mm. you know, the government owes us a little bit of money. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how much $10,000 of that would be worth. 150 pay. years ago? Or probably yeah. a few million. And it was your father, Adelaido, that wrote the memoir mm -hmm. on the New Mexico Quarterly Historical Review. No, let me, let me correct that. Let me correct that. Juliana Leone Perea left uh, what he called Una Breve Historia de la Vida de Julian Aragoni Perea, a brief biographical sketch of his life. And he wrote it in Spanish. And that was in, it, it is still in our possession somewhere. <coughs> but anyway, it was in dad's possession. And uh, more recently, and I forget the year, um, my dad and mother were living in Albuquerque, I forget the name of the street. On Sycamore. No, no? not Sycamore. No. Oxford? Maybe Oxford. I think it was Oxford. Yeah. And one of the neighbors was a history graduate student at UNM, at UNM. Mm -hmm. and my, my dad showed him that sketch. And he asked my dad for, for permission to research it. And my, my dad said yes, but before you can do that, he says, I'll have to copyright it. So my dad copyrighted the, the biographical sketch. And I, I used to know the history of Professor name I forget it now. But anyway, he researched it, and he was able to prove every statement that Julian Aragoni Perea made. So it's kind of fascinating. And yeah. which brings me to uh, something else that I wanted to touch on. There's quite a group of people that they basically represented, we are only representing three families here. Maybe four, but three. We represent the Rodolfo Sanchez, Trinidad Sanchez, and who else? Adelaido. Adelaido Sanchez. And there's how many of, and, and not all of us are here. There is enough, the family is so extensive, it's so large, and there are so many people that have an interest in the family history that this family could, if it chose to, form a foundation that would be dedicated dedicated to the research and recording of the extended family history of the Sanchez line. And it would be Sanchez, Aragon, Sanchez, Nelson, Sanchez, whatever, no? And uh, when we go to Plaza de Arriba today and we visit that chapel, we can almost say that in our family, there is a private mausoleum for some of our ancestors, mm -hmm. which is the Capilla de Sangre de Cristo. Mm -hmm. I say private because, there, as I say that, that I know there's only three families in there. Uh, all of you uh, young ones out here that aspire to record in your history, give it some thought. Talk about it. Maybe you'll end up forming a, co a committee that look into the possibility of setting up a foundation that would dedicate itself to organizing and preserving the history of your ancestors. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.